In this video, I just wanted to show you how you can add the virtual terminal to a screen flow. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new flow. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to create a screen flow. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add a new screen. And once I add the new screen, uh, very similar to like we have on the Lightning record pages. Um, you have to scroll down to the custom section of the components that are available, and you can drag the Blackthorn virtual terminal into the flow itself. Now, in flow, there's a, a few different fields that you can specify and you have to set due to how flow works. So for example, I have to specify um, uh, an API name for, for the virtual terminal itself. So I'm just going to call it virtual terminal LWC as an example. And what I can do in flow is, for example, set the amount. Now I can use a resource from the flow itself, or I can enter the amount directly onto here. And what will happen is when that flow executes, it will take whatever values you've got here. So um, what I want to do as an example here is I'm just going to, I want to, for example, place this flow into, let's say, an invoice. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call this um, record ID. Um, and I'm going to choose that this is a record. And this is for the invoice object. And I'm going to just select that it's available for input. Um, what this now does, it allows me to get data from that record. So for example, uh, for the amount, I can then choose to have the amount to pay defaulted onto the terminal itself. So that's how you can use variables to specify things um, onto the onto the how it, it shows up to users on on the actual once the flow executes. Um, you have other options such as enable light version. In order to enable it here, um, you would have to specify um, that it's true. Um, it, everything defaults to false where you have that option. So for example, for hide amount, you'd have to perform this the same way. So I'd have to specify that the global uh, constant is true. Um, like I said, everything defaults to, fault, uh, to false, so everything will be shown. Um, the rest of the values, I think you've got pretty much um, correct from on the base. What I can see on the uh, on the document, um, yeah. So that's how you you would then use the component itself in a flow. Um, what I can also show you is how uh, it's a different flow. That's how you create that flow. But I can show you on a different flow how I've used the that component itself so i created this 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 example flow that just sits on the invoice it goes and gets some information from the invoice it gets some information from related items but this is where i'm using the virtual terminal itself um, what i'm doing is i'm defaulting the amount to whatever the invoice amount is and the currency i'm using the same thing whatever the uh, currency from the invoice is um, and I've not specified the process type based on the options, so um, and not selected what it's actually related to um, already. But I, I, I could, for example, set um, the account on the on this to be defaulted if if it's a field that I've got on the invoice itself. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. That's how it works in flows. Um, Flows you can actually place pretty much anywhere you want in Salesforce. So you could do that on an on on a record, or you could place it on a, on a homepage. You could expose it um, on a community. So there's there's a lot of use cases for Flow, um, but the sort of component level configuration really allows you to kind of solve for um, for whatever actually you want to place it, and the fact that you can. You can um, pass information into the flow. You can create logic that allows you to go get any information that you need, allows you to really customize um, that experience and the use of the virtual terminal in flow however you like. Thank you.